Hey, what is up, mortals? It is TC Crew here with a new video for you. Welcome to part four of What If Quirks Were Outlawed. I just wanted to greet you guys, but just saying, sit back and relax. You're in for a treat. So we begin. Following Endeavor's defeat at the hands of two teenage vigilantes, the AQTF increased their manpower. This meant many more patrols and investigations to find and capture their vigilantes. The public, however, were kept in the dark on their reasons. The AQTF knew that there would be those that supported them no matter what. But there would also be those who supported the vigilantes. If they found out that the vigilante group had managed to take out Endeavor, an infamously powerful agent of the AQTF, they would be more motivated to fight back and spread their ideas. As for the vigilante themselves, they became more cautious with their actions. Stain was still recovering from his bout with Endeavor, but it didn't stop them from working. Bakugo and Midoriya continued patrolling on their own, making sure to be extra careful about their decisions. The two were told to keep an eye out for any of the criminals that might have escaped from the grasp of the AQTF that night. But Midoriya couldn't help but worry about something else. It was about Kirishima. The teen had told him that he wasn't alone that night, that he was with some of his friends. Midoriya was subconsciously trying to find these friends, even though he wouldn't be able to tell them apart. He had a strange feeling that Kirishima wouldn't be able to locate them that easily, and that they were in deep trouble since they might have escaped from the AQTF. A nerd! Don't go dozing off on me! The angry voice of an explosive blonde whisper shouted. Midoriya was knocked out of his thought as he jumped and looked at his mass wearing companion. Bakugo looked at the slightly nervous Midoriya, getting more annoyed as he then turned towards the chaotic streets below them. Where are those damn crooks? How long do they plan on hiding? The blonde exclaimed aggressively, slightly cursing the criminals that they needed to find. Midoriya looked at his companion nervously as he answered his question. They're probably hiding from the AQTF. I don't think they're going to show themselves anytime soon, the green haired boy said with a slightly trembling voice. Bakugo's gaze locked itself back into Midoriya, as if he was even more annoyed before he said, Of course they aren't. So how are we supposed to find them? Sounding like he was progressively getting more annoyed and angry by the second. Midoriya jumped a little upon hearing this, not expecting the hyper-aggressive tone, but he understood why Bakugo was annoyed. The AQTF were almost everywhere, making their movements hard enough in the first place. The fact that they had to try and find criminals that were actively hiding just made things way harder than they needed to be. These setbacks made their job difficult, but Midoriya thought of something that could perhaps make it easier. I guess we should start by searching places where the AQTF are at least likely to be at? The green haired vigilante said, but his unsure tone made it seem like he thought that it was a bad idea. Bakugo looked at Midoriya with a passive aggressive expression until he calmed down a little. So the less likely we are at finding the AQTF bastards, the more likely we are finding out the damn criminals. I like the sound of that. The blonde then said, as a slight grin formed underneath his mask. Midori was shocked to hear Bakugo not be angry with him, for he had been nervously waiting for that type of reaction. So he was genuinely surprised to hear Bakugo speak to him like that. The change of tone and manner didn't last long, however, until Bakugo walked past Midoriya and said, Let's get moving already, with his usual aggressive voice. Midoriya tried to remain as calm as possible as he followed his companion on their patrol. The two vigilantes went on their search, looking through places that they thought the AQTF wouldn't be present. They managed to find some activity this way, but it didn't look like anyone was one of the criminals that they were looking for. The duo continued their efforts, stopping and doing what they could whenever they found themselves in an encounter. They made their way around the area, but they never found people that they were looking for. Bakugo grew frustrated after repeatedly coming up empty-handed, so much so that Midoriya almost had to stop him from destroying something with his quirk. Calm down, you might draw unwanted attention. Midoriya said in a hushed tone, trying to stop his blonde companion. Bakugo just got more irritated as he said, I welcome that attention if it means that the crooks will show their ugly mugs. With an aggressive voice, Midoriya jumped and trembled from Bakugo's aggression, for he almost thought that the blonde was going to attack him. The two continued to argue quite loudly for god knows how long, but it mostly consisted of Bakugo shouting like an animal while Midoriya cowered. Their argument was cut short, however, by the sound of a pained scream coming from an alleyway. Both vigilantes stopped to look in the direction of the scream, only to have Midoriya running in without thinking just a split second later. 
Bakugo got annoyed and shouted for his companion, but the green-haired boy didn't hear any of it as he ran with full speed. It was weird, but he felt that he needed to rush. Midoriya felt that someone was in trouble and he didn't think before running in. He needed to do something, or he at least needed to try. The green-haired boy rushed through the alley before turning right towards where he thought the scream had come from. He was confused, however, when he arrived and saw no one there. Midoriya's worry skyrocketed as he began to search the area with his eyes, but it was interrupted when Bakugo barged in and shouted, Hey nerd, don't run off like an idiot! But it was cut off when something small but heavy struck him in the head. The mask wing blonde fell limp and unconscious to the ground, and only now did Midoriya fully process what had happened. Ah! The green-haired vigilante tried to shout, but it was cut off by something strong coming out of nowhere and striking him in the skull. Midoriya's vision grew hazy as he lost his strength. Once on the ground, he looked ahead, only to see the feet of some stranger before everything went black. When Bakugo woke up, he couldn't see clearly. His vision was hazy and it didn't help that it was almost pitch black wherever he was. His body almost felt tired, as if he barely had any strength left. Bakugo slowly regained some of his power and vision and tried to move, only to find that he couldn't. He looked down and could faintly see what looked to be a long rope tied around him. The blonde immediately tried to break free, but quickly found that it wasn't possible. Another realization then dawned upon him. He wasn't wearing his mask anymore. Bakugo took a deep breath, regaining his senses as he tried to recall what had happened. Someone had knocked him out and must have dragged him here, and that person had seen his face. The blonde then took a sharp breath, as he remembered that he wasn't alone before being knocked out. He tried to look around himself, but to no avail, he then started to pull at the ropes and was met with a weird resistance. It was as if someone else was tied up at the other end behind him. This suspiciously was then confirmed when Bakugo heard grunts of pain from the other side of the pillar he was leaning against. He quickly turned his head towards this newly awoke person as much as he could, for this could only be one person. Nerd, you awake? The blonde whisper shouted, praying deep down that this was the person that he hoped it was. He anxiously waited for a response until it came like a wave of relief. Uh, yeah, I'm awake. The grunting and audibly pained voice of Midoriya answered, sounding like he was even more disoriented than Bakugo. The blonde let out a deep breath, one that he didn't know he was holding, before he asked another question. Are you okay? Sounding a little calmer than before, Midoriya grunted in more pain as he tried to lift his heavy head before answering. My, my head feels like it has had a natural cushion injection. With a voice that seemed to be restrained from all the pain, but Bakugo was relieved that Midori's most prominent and hopefully only injury was a severe headache, but he made sure that the green-haired boy wouldn't notice this. Where are we? Midoriya then asked painfully, finally regaining enough awareness to realize his situation. None of them got to make any further observations, however, before the room suddenly lit up. Both vigilantes staggered after suddenly being blinded as they strained their eyes towards the source. It looked to be a floodlight of sorts, and it was behind a weird figure. So you're awake finally. You had me waiting for a long time. The figure then said with a cold voice. Bakugo and Midoriya were still adjusting to the blinding light, therefore they couldn't make out any details of the man's appearance. Now who are you? The man then asked his voice remained as cold as ever. The vigilantes didn't know who this man was, but they still knew enough to not tell him their names. They run around and break the law on almost a daily basis, so they shouldn't be throwing their names out randomly. Depends on who's asking! Bakugo shouted quite aggressively towards the mysterious man. The figure was silent for a moment until he walked into the light to finally reveal himself. The two teens didn't recognize this man but they didn't need to in order to know that he was their enemy. The label on his suit that read AQTF was more than enough to make that judgment. The man's expression was calm and stern as he sat himself down on the floodlight before saying, I am Miria Sasaki, also known as Nidai. I think that you both know where my affiliations lie. So will you tell me who you are now? Bakugo and Midoriya were frozen with fear, for they were in an incredibly bad position. They had essentially been captured by an AQTF officer and there didn't seem to be a realistic way of getting away. What makes matters worse is that they didn't know what type of quirk Anidai has and he has seen their faces. 
Bakugo tried to hide his panic as he tried to think of a way out of this. Their best bet would be to fight their way out, but even that came with its own problems. Night Eye had taken all their equipment, making them unarmed if not accounting for his quirk, but the fight they needed first to break free. And how were they supposed to do that? The blonde could feel himself panic more until the sensation of something cold and sharp landed in his palm. Bakugo was confused and tried to feel for it, only to realize that it was a small knife. He then turned his head towards Midoriya, who was looking back at him. The green-haired boy was hiding his panic as well, but he was calm enough to do something. Bakugo quickly realized that Midoriya must have taken inspiration from Stain, and hid a small knife so far up his sleeve that Night Eye couldn't find it. Bakugo calmed his nerves, for hope the shape of a knife that he couldn't see had appeared. Midoriya could cut them loose, they could get the jump on Night Eye, which is what they needed in order to escape. They just had to be discreet while distracting the agent through conversation, and they had to do it without spilling any vital information. Did you bite your tongues, or are you just ignoring me? Night Eye then said, knocking both teens out of their somewhat mutual thought process. Bakugo immediately diverted his energy to talk, while Midoriya began chipping away at the ropes. What do we look like to you, you AQTF bastard? Bakugo scowled, quickly returning his old abrasive self. Night Eye was unaffected as he walked closer to them both and said, What do you look like to me? Those law-breaking, pathetic, mask-wearing brats with attitude ring a bell. His cold voice never changed in the slightest. Bakugo got more angry upon hearing this, and he could tell that Midoriya didn't like it either. But there wasn't anything they could do. Not only were they tied up, but Night Eye wasn't wrong with his observation. The hard truth was that they were law-breaking, mask wearing brass with attitudes and they had happened to be in a pathetic state right now. Bakugo didn't respond to the man. He just grunted to show his distaste. Night Eye was still unaffected, however, as he continued by saying, I think the two of you already know this, but it was reported that Endeavor was defeated by a group of vigilantes. Not only that, but the prime suspects right now happen to be two mask wearing teenagers. Just as coldly as before, both Bakugo and Midoriya could feel themselves sweat nervously, but they did their best to hide it. The AQTF knew enough to tell that Endeavor was taken down by teenagers, but Night Eye spoke as if that was all that they knew. There probably weren't that many choices from when talking about teenage vigilantes, but there still wasn't enough evidence to say that it was them. So long as they didn't confess, they would probably be alright, but for how long? Bakugo felt his hand towards the spot and Midoriya had been chipping away at the ropes, only to find that it was almost at the end. The blonde felt a wave of relief and prepared himself to jump onto Night Eye, but was confused when he felt that Midoriya suddenly stopped sawing. Bakugo was confused and looked towards his companion, only to find that Night Eye was standing in front of him with just a few inches of distance between them. It just happens to be that I have caught myself two mask wearing teenagers with attitudes, but I can't help but wonder if you had anything to do with Endeavor's unexpected defeat. Night Eye then said, his voice changing to a more intimidating tone. Midoriya shivered upon hearing this, desperately trying to break eye contact with Night Eye as he answered, I, I don't know what you're talking about. The green haired boy answered, shaking nervously. Night Eye was quite quiet for a while until he placed his hand on Midoriya's shoulder while saying, Sorry, let me correct myself. Only one of you seems to have an attitude. Just as coldly as he had before, Midoriya was still nervous as he slowly looked into the cold eyes that were hiding behind Night Eye's glasses. The agent then let go of the green haired vigilante before making his way over to Bakugo. The blonde was covered in a cold sweat. As the man kneeled down in front of him and did the same as he had done with Midoriya, he placed his hand on his shoulder, looked him in the eyes and asked, Would you happen to know anything about it? With a voice that was reeking of cold intimidation, Bakugo was shook ever so slightly as he remained silent. This man's cold air and intimidating aura was unlike anything he had ever felt before. It was outright terrifying. The blonde didn't know what to do and almost panicked. But he calmed himself down when hope returned to him. The ropes were loosened, loose enough for him to break free with an explosion. This only meant one thing, Midoriya had finished his carving of the ropes. Not only that, but he had done it at an almost perfect time. Naida was directly in front of him and dared to say defenseless, there was no better time to get the jump on him than now. Did you bite your tongue again? Naida asked, impatiently waiting for Bakugo's response. The blonde just grinned as he answered, No! 
right before launching himself toward Night Eye with an explosion. The ropes flew about, breaking both vigilantes free. Bakugo threw his attacks toward Night Eye, but to his surprise, the agent managed to avoid it flawlessly. The blonde got more annoyed and launched himself for another attack, only to have it met with the same fate. Bakugo was then left wide open, and he could clearly see Night Eye close in to attack him. But his save and grace came in from Midoriya, who charged from behind the agent, knife in hand. The blonde couldn't help but grin, for it looked good. Night Eye couldn't see Midoriya coming, as such he shouldn't be able to avoid him, but he would soon realize that it was all for naught. Night Eye turned around with haste before hitting Midoriya with a powerful kick to the side. The green haired boy slid back across the floor, roaring in pain, before the agent turned his attention back to Bakugo. The blonde didn't have a chance to wipe his own grin off his face before Night Eye grabbed him by the arm and slammed him into the ground. Bakugo had the wind knocked out of him. He watched Night Eye stare at them ominously. The man fixed his glasses back into place. I saw this coming, but I welcomed it because now I can force you to talk. He said, voice sounding more ominous than anything they'd ever heard before. Bakugo tried to force himself up. So did Midoriya, but they couldn't. The pain was too great. But that's not all. They were afraid because in front of them was a dark presence of an evil government that had no issue with inflicting severe injuries. The two boys shivered even more as Night Eye slowly made his way over to them. He had pulled out some strange item from his pocket, holding it like it was some sort of weapon. As he readied himself to attack, Bakugo and Midoriya closed their eyes and shielded themselves, waiting for it to be over. When they heard a weird noise, they thought that Night Eye was going to attack again. But instead, it sounded like something else had come in and hit him. They opened their eyes and immediately couldn't believe them. In front of them was a scared teen, roughly the same age as them, with black hair. They couldn't see his face, for he had his back turned towards them. But they didn't need to see it to know who it was. His arms were held outwards, looking like hardened rocks as he turned to face the vigilantes. Both the blonde and the green-haired boy felt a little relieved as the black-haired teen grinned while saying, Do you guys look for trouble? Or does trouble find you? Thank you all for sticking around and I hope that you enjoyed. Before you leave, we would just like to let you know that We The Celestials has many other channels for your entertainment and viewing purposes. All the information you will need is right below here in the description. So feel free to check out all the other incredible projects our team creates. Secondly, on behalf of We The Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details will be in the description below. That's all for today's video, so goodbye and have a divine day!